This project idea is called visual journaling. It's kind of like a cross between a sketchbook and a diary. Where did you come up with the idea? When I was working over the summer teaching classes, two of my students had these visual journals that they would work on every day and they were just beautiful and I asked them about it so they taught me how to do it and I started my own. It totally changed my process of working as well. I was feeling really stuck in my artwork, wanting mm -hmm. to make these really big paintings that were very serious. They didn't really have anything not serious going on, so I used this as a way just to make color palettes that I really like. Is it sort of like a breath of fresh air for Oh, you? definitely, like definitely. And I think it is for my teens as well. I think that's one of the reasons why they do it. It's very low key. Yeah, Less yeah. Less stress. Yeah, about there's making no like a huge to... project right. that you're spending hours and hours on. There's only as much commitment as you want to put into it. You can do it every day. And in fact, I label the pages with the day and so do they. If I only do it like a couple times a week, that's fine. Or if I do it like once every two weeks, that's fine too. It's whenever I need to do it. If I were a teacher and I was assigning this project to a class, what type of time frame would you put it into? This is a really flexible project, and that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. It can take up a whole class period, but also it's a great project to either begin a class with or end a class with. If a kid finishes a project ahead of time and needs something to do, this is a really e easy project to jump right into and work on until everyone else is done. Do you feel like it's a project you could give as a homework assignment, or does it really have to be in class? I think it can be done as a homework assignment, but it was more useful, I think, having it in class as a kind of thing to bridge one project to another. Mm -hmm. I think if you want to take it home and work on it at home, that's up to the students if they want to do that. But maybe doing a, a couple spreads a week would be a good homework. Well, it could be the type of project that you introduce in class. Yes. And then you say to the students, okay, now go do it on your own. Yes. Where they really have more time and space to work on. I think what's really important about it is that it encourages students to want to work in a kind of sketchbook format and get them to create every day mm -hmm. because it becomes a very personal project and something that they want to go to because it's about themselves. And I think sometimes with sketchbook assignments, if they're too open-ended, students feel lost. They don't know where oh, yeah. to get started. So I like the fact that this project gives a particular format to work in, but it's not so constrained that you can't make it your own. You know how you get like little knickknacks mm -hmm. that you, you don't like show cards from shows mm -hmm. or magazines that I read. I read Art Forum, but then I have all these magazines and I don't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. This makes me feel less bad about having all that junk around. I can just cut it up and put it in the book and then it's, it's nice. Do you have a rule that you have to cover all of the paper? Because that seems consistent throughout all the spreads. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty standard thing that all of the kids have done and that mm -hmm. I've kind of picked up from them. Uh, there's no empty page stuff. I think my sketchbook is more like stuff all over the place, like some pages not filled at all. Mm -hmm. This is like, I like to cover the page until it's totally full and then it's done. Where do you get materials for collage? It seems overwhelming to think about where you're going to get those images from. I have a few really good sources. One of them is I have way too many art forums at my house. These are giant art magazines that I read once to see which shows I want to go to and mm -hmm. then kind of toss. Since they're filled with art, a lot of the hard work is it's already, already done, done for you. <laughs> it already awesome. looks so pretty. So I'm usually looking for things like that kind of texture. I would cut that out maybe. The process isn't random. You're looking for something particular. I mean, there are things that I like, but I'm not necessarily trying to build an image that's already in my head. Usually mm -hmm. it's a very automatic drawing kind of process. Mm -hmm. And some things I'll save for later if they don't quite fit the design that I'm into. Like this is very different from what's going on here. So those maybe wouldn't be in the same collage, but I would keep them for, for later. But how do you recognize, oh, that's something I want to use? Oftentimes it's very color based. I'll be feeling like in my sketchbook right here, there will be a certain mood or maybe I'm thinking about a certain painting that I'm working on. All this fits this very computer colored, like cyan, magenta, 
yellow. So I'm just pulling things that kind of fit within that. Mm -hmm. I had this beer the other day that had this fish on it and I loved it. I love it when there are like good graphics on, on like food in the stores or something because then I can cut it up and save it. You're looking for this stuff all the time then. It's not just kind flipping of. through a magazine. I feel like this is the way art should happen as you're walking down the street and you kind of see everything through this filter. You're automatically kind of filing away that stuff mm -hmm. for later. This is only taking that same process and giving it a physical action. This is like an Audubon type book. They're copyright free illustrations. So what we do for these is instead of cutting them right out of here, I go to the photocopier and I make photocopies of some of the things that I like. The other thing about the Xerox is you can be less precious about it, right? right? Exactly. You know, you can just mess up and get another one. Right. This gorilla monkey hand is way too good. Also that little <laughs> monkey's face. Like I can't imagine only using that once. I would have like a heart attack because I want like a million of them. So I made like several photocopies of this one thing and I just keep using it over and over again. <laughs> A lot of the times these animals weren't drawn from direct observation, especially like giraffes and things that are like mm. kind of hard to get to. So the animals look like kind of funny. Well, they're really wacky. Like yeah. I love this walrus yeah. here. This thing's yeah. hysterical. It looks totally like not, it looks fantastical. It looks like not a real creature. And so having that humor in there, that personality, I think really adds to the collage. It's also a change of pace because instead of having all photographs, you're actually using illustrations. Yeah. I think postcards and photos are another great thing that you can add to your journal. I love to collect old show cards from museums and things. And so, and then stick those in just because I like the images. I love this. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to use that. Now I don't have to like waste that show card or it doesn't have to stay on my bulletin board forever. It can be in a place where I can constantly come back to it. I think stickers are another great option, especially for <laughs> those that might have trouble doing the collaging, mm -hmm. cutting out all the pieces. A sticker is like doing collage. Mm -hmm. It's just like the image is already glued on the back for you. And it must be so fast and convenient. Oh yeah, it's really fast. It fills up an area really quick and there's so many different stickers out there. I had a sticker collection in the fourth grade actually. So did I. I totally had one. I was so into it too. It was like such a thing. Look, I have these dots from <laughs> from selling paintings at my work. You put the little red sail oh, dots right, right. on. <laughs> yeah, I've awesome. got some of those for myself. Another thing that I like doing in my spare time is making stamps out of old erasers. And I have a few of them lying around so I can reuse them forever and ever and ever. So I have this uh, this goose stamp that I made. I really just like these giant erasers that you can get because they don't take long to work on and they're like very soft and mm -hmm. I can still get a fair amount of detail without too much effort. This is like one of the first stamps I ever made. It's a giraffe. Usually I have to ink this up. This is an old stamp pad. I like it when the stamp doesn't come out perfectly. Oh yeah. Because then I think it's really beautiful and textured. So I sometimes like a less good stamp. Yeah, it, it gives off that like handmade quality. So Ooh, very there's cool. the giraffe. I really like to use an X-Acto knife because I can get a really clean line, especially if it's something that's stuck within the middle of the page or has a lot of zigzags. If you're working on this project with younger kids, scissors work just fine. Mm -hmm. If I've got thicker pieces that need a bit more heft with cutting, I have a box knife. When the knife gets dull, it has little scored edges on the blade, so you can just snap it off and it takes like, just like that. And then you have a nice sharp new blade. My favorite glue is to use a glue stick. I really like these Avery permanent glue sticks. They have like the best tack to them, I feel like. And they're also acid free, which means that they have an archival quality that makes your pages last longer without getting discoloration. I don't really like using wet glue because it makes the paper really wet. I use some wet glue here mm -hmm. and it makes it all warped and mm -hmm. weird. How do you know where to get started? Because I think a lot of people look at that blank page and it's really intimidating. So how do you know what's the first piece of paper that you glue down? I just start looking for anything interesting. It really, really doesn't matter. And I can't stress that enough. Once you have just like a piece down, 
the blank page looks a lot less intimidating. If you don't like how a page is going, about 95% of the time, by the time it's all done, you're going to end up liking it because that filled quality using mm -hmm. just pieces that you like, if it's made out of a whole bunch of things that you like, you're probably going to end up liking That's it. That's true. It's a good point. Yeah. A cheap substitute for a cutting mat is just using a piece of tag board or cardboard. That works just fine. A few years ago, I did a collage project in my design class, and I came upon this problem because I gave them tons of stacks of magazines. And what happened is they just sat and looked at the magazines. <laughs> they didn't actually cut anything. They never really got to the project. And so I got really frustrated because I felt like the project couldn't move past the magazines. So how would you deal with that as an instructor? I have had the same issue before, and I think it really helps just to limit the number of magazines you bring in, because I think that there is such a thing as choice fatigue. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it's so many choices that, that you nobody can't. knows where to focus. Do you think it matters how big the pieces you cut out are? Because I know that whenever I teach drawing, I try to get the students to attack the biggest shapes first. Does that same deal with collage or does it not matter? I think it helps to have things of all different sizes. If you take out too many small things or are cutting out too many objects that have like lots of little details, then it can get really monotonous trying to cut all that out and glue all that on. But I also think that a little bit of decoration never hurts. Mm -hmm. I like to get somewhat abstracted shapes. I try not to do too many objects because I feel like objects are actually harder to use in a collage than just abstract shapes because they have their objectness. Like I have this monkey and I want, because I have this cool monkey, I just want the monkey like there for people mm. to see. You're looking for a balance between abstract shapes and colors, yes. but also a few recognizable objects. Yes. So this green piece here, this was part of a coat, but it could also be like a mountain. Mm. It could just, it could be like some foliage. Do you ever add text from the magazines? Occasionally, but I feel like text is very similar to objects. Your students just wanted to read the magazines. Right. I find that happening to me when I try to include text. Like, I just want to read the text. I, I really like having this next to this kind of pattern, so I think I'll include that somewhere on here. I can see that it's probably actually an advantage to have a small sketchbook, because if your sketchbook gets too big, there's so much more space to fill and then it just takes that much longer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the time element is a big reason why people don't sketchbook every day or don't make art every day is they feel like it has to be like this big thing, like they have mm -hmm. to sit down and set up and do it. And I really think that this project should be something that you can just pick up and kind mm -hmm. of put a little thing in and then be done. Mm -hmm. I think this project is really in line with something that one of my professors said that I kind of live by where you want to treat art or making art going to studio like hygiene where you just do it 15 minutes a day every day. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the perfect kind of project to satisfy that. Sometimes people dream up these huge projects and then you think, oh, well, how do I start this? And you're so overwhelmed by the prospect of that, that you just don't do it. Yeah, Which it's is really worse than just 10 minutes a day. It's not a huge deal. Yeah, when it's 10 minutes a day. When you're ready to glue things down, do you plan it out? What order you're going to glue things in? Or is it just do it as you go along? Yeah, I'll do a layout first. And it won't be a perfect layout because I also do a lot of layering with the with the different pieces, I like certain things to stick out and certain things to hide beneath other stuff. Like for instance, I have this really big shape here and this isn't gonna fit on here without covering up my little animals. So I have to kind of cut around. That's really the next step. Mm -hmm. I don't like having much white space show because unless it's very purposeful, it tends to look bad to me. It also looks unfinished sometimes. Yeah, it looks unfinished. There are certain, there are definitely areas in my book where I have white space like here, but usually it's because I've done some writing and mm -hmm. then I still mm -hmm. fill it in with like little patterns or like little patterns around here with pens later. It makes a really big difference. 
All I know is that the first sheet is going to be this yellow thing in the background. Well, you have to work backwards. You yeah. have to put the thing that's furthest back yep. in first and then layer on top. Yep. And I find that overlap, it's so much easier than getting two pieces of paper and trying to get them to touch perfectly because inevitably you always end up with a little bit of the white showing in between the two pieces of collage. Yeah, yeah. And that looks not as good as just having the pieces like overlap yeah. too much. So like, much no easier one, and neater. No one can tell what's underneath, so no. it doesn't matter. <laughs> These are thoughts that are going through my head, but they're not anxious. They're not like, oh, it has to be this way. Oh, it has to be that way. It's just like, eh, I kind of prefer it to look like this because that's what I like. You seem like you're really chill about yes. your choices. Like you're not getting hyper uptight about, oh, this is going to be a disaster and oh no, I can't fix that. I think that's a really good mindset to have. We were saying earlier that sometimes this is a good starter project yeah. that leads into another project. So yeah. I like the idea of like that. Yeah, like your brain is going, you're making decisions. After the initial collage with papers and magazine clippings is done, stickers are a nice collage-like addition where you have a ready-made image that already has that stickiness on the back and you can just go bam to decorate. I took a couple parrots that kind of fit the theme of my current collage and I put them in areas where they would pop out a little bit. So I put a a uh, cockatoo in the corner. I feel like a cockatoo is kind of my spirit animal. I'm using gel pens to finish off the details and the white space in this collage. The gel pens are nice because they're shiny or glittery or very electric colored and that adds a nice little pizzazz to the drawing. And in this white space here, I am reacting off of the different patterns and colors that are already in the collage that I've included. And I'm making a pattern that is kind of similar to that, so it will fit right in. After all the marker work's done, are you pretty much finished? Just about. The only thing that I have to add is the date. And I like to do that because it gives me a chance to look back on when I made a certain piece and remember the time, the context of making that piece, but also it keeps me accountable for continuing to work in the journal. The thing about this journal is that you're adding a little bit at a time and mm -hmm. anything that can be a segue into the next page is good. Mm -hmm. Do you ever like to go back and just flip through and oh, see everything? Oh, I love everything? it. I love to do that. When you're doing one page, you're just like, oh, I've just done this one page. But seeing it come together, having that process of it getting larger and larger and larger and thicker and thicker. And too, watching the accumulation. Yeah, you're like, wow, I really made a piece of work here. Like it becomes a piece of artwork in its own right. Well, it seems like this project is so great because it's super flexible. It doesn't require super fancy supplies or materials. And yet it's really satisfying. You feel very accomplished, even though it's a small thing a little bit at a time. Very personal thing. Um, sorry, Fluffy's it's making okay. a noise. It's it's a snoring. <laughs> don't tell him not to, don't tell him not to snore. Dude.